One of the most difficult times in Escape from Tarkov is right at the very beginning. You have limited access to gear, ammo, and meds. Let's take a look at some pre flea market loadouts that'll help you get through that time period. So when I think of a loadout, I think of the full package. We're talking about the gear that you wear, the weapon and ammo that you're using, and the meds that you're taking into raid. So let's look at how we build that without the flea market. So starting from the top down, we're gonna first look at helmets. And these are the two that are available from the traders. We got the SSH-68 steel helmet and the 6B-47 Ratnik BSH helmet. The Ratnik helmet comes from Prapper at a price of 33,000 336 rubles. The major advantages over the SSH-68 steel helmet is that it covers the ears and offers better ergonomics. The SSH-68 helmet comes from Ragman and it costs 22,456 rubles. This helmet covers the top and nape but not the ears. Personally, I would recommend going with the SSH-68 steel helmet. For 10,000 rubles less, that's going to feel a lot better than the change in the ergonomics. Next, let's talk about headsets. If I had to choose between a helmet and a headset, I would take the headset 99.9% .9 of the time. The ability to hear somebody at a distance is much more important than having a chance to survive a bullet hitting me in the head. The two options from the level one traders are the GSSH-01 and the M32. The GSSH-01 active headset comes from Prapper at a value of 13,039 rubles. The Omsman Ear Armor M32 headset comes from Skier at 19,550. Headsets are highly personal preference. However, you cannot use the M32 headset with the SSH-68 steel helmet. So if you're going to go with that combination, you have to use the GSSH from Prapper. Personally, I would use the GSSH just to save a little bit of rubles early Optionally, on. Optionally, you can run a balaclava. It's from Ragman level one. It costs 2,875 rubles, but it does kind of break up the face outline. So if you're sitting in a bush, your face isn't popping out. Unfortunately, at level one traders, there's really only one good armor option, and that is the Paco armor. There is one other choice, but as far as repairability and destructibility, the Paco is the way to go. The Paco armor comes from Ragman level one, and it costs 29,154 rubles. Much like the armor, there's only one good rig choice, and that's the bank robber chest rig. This comes from Ragman at 10,000 rubles. When it comes to backpacks, at level 1, you have three different choices from Ragman. You got the MBSS, you got the Sling Bag, and you have the Burkit. In my previous video, I talked about how to make money in Escape from Tarkov, and one of the biggest takeaways is that you need the space to carry out the loot if you want to actually make money. So I recommend getting the biggest bag that you could possibly fit, and currently at level 1, that's going to be the Burkit for 23,444 rubles. However, you could opt for one of the smaller bags depending on what you're trying to do in a raid. Probably the most important aspect of your loadout in Escape from Tarkov is your ammo and the weapon that fires it. So here's a cross-section of the guns that I would use before I reached level 2 traders. Starting at the top, we have the Mosin Infantry Carbine, followed by the OPSKS, the VPO215, the MP133, the MP431C, and the VPO136. Each of these guns has their own specific purpose. The Mosin build is just stock from Prapper at level 1. It has a price of 34,825 rubles. 762 by 54 r is great at penetration and dealing damage to targets. The major downside with the Mosin is its slow rate of fire and long reload times. Next up, we have the OPSKS, available from Jaeger for 33,190 97 rubles. This gun's great because it's fairly cheap to get started. It fires 762 by 39 PS ammo. Additionally, the OPSKS can fit two different types of optics on it. You can attach a close range optic and a medium range optic with the PSO. The VPO is the only sniper on the list that you can get before level two traders that has a medium range optic. Additionally, it can be suppressed, but it's fairly expensive. Overall, the entire build is fairly cheap. The VPO itself is 18,585 rubles from Jaeger. When using the VPO, I'd recommend using the FMJ rounds until you find APM ammo. The MP133, coupled with the Express Buckshot is great for taking out the legs of enemy PMCs and scavs. Comes in a base cost from Jaeger at 23,869 rubles. While it's a little bit more expensive than some of the other shotgun options that are out there, it does have a six round capacity, which makes it great for repeated shots. The MP143 double barrel shotgun. This gun is great because it can fire both barrels at the same time, inflicting massive amounts of damage on players. Most of the time with almost any ammo, you can one shot somebody if you hit them with both shots. Additionally, this gun is a great budget option as it's 8,820 rubles from Jaeger. This is great for running around factory naked and just trying to scoop up some loot. And finally, my bread and butter for the early wipe. This is the VPO-136 Pepper KM, the 7.62 variant. This is available from Skier, level 1, and it costs 32,420 rubles. In addition to that base cost, to really kit it out with the best things you can get on there before the flea market, you're going to need to spend about 29,000 more rubles to put on a site, pick up three different mags, put on the foregrip, and put on the bastion to actually mount the site to. The basic build for the VPO-136 is the 762 by 39 30 round magazines from Prapper Level 1, the Walther MRS Reflex Site from Skier Level 1, the AKA Academia Bastion Dust Cover from Skier Level 1, and the WASR-10 CAF Wooden Foregrip 
also from skier level one. Overall, this gun gives you a high ammo capacity, manageable recoil, with a fairly decent amount of ergo and an actual optic to use early on. Finally, let's talk about meds. So I like to take a tiered approach to this. So first, we're gonna look at the fact that we needed something to stop a heavy bleed, a light bleed, and then heal during the raid. Next, we're gonna look at kind of the minimum plus an ideal loadout. And then finally, what you really wanna get with a barter. Looking at level one therapist, we can see that we can get the S March tourniquet for 1,332 rubles. This is gonna be able to stop your heavy bleeds. Next, we can get the AC septic bandage, which is the light bleed stopper for 1,949 rubles. Finally, I would prefer to pick up the car med kit at 7,372 rubles. You get 220 HP healing out of it over top of the AI2 med kit, which only gives you 100 HP, but costs 4,149 rubles. So you get a little bit more HP healing per item, and this can double as stopping a light bleed. So while those items are sort of required for every raid, if you get shot, there's a good chance that you're going to have one of the two bleeds, uh, and then you're also going to want to be able to heal. Outside of that, you probably want to be able to splint something. If your leg breaks, it's really hard to get out of raid. In addition, you probably want some pain meds to be able to keep fighting through any kind of breaks or injuries that you sustain during a fight. And that's where the splint and the painkillers come in. All of this can be picked up from the therapist, 2,677 rubles for the immobilizing sprint from the therapist. 5,695 rubles for the painkillers from the therapist. So while this isn't the best bang for the buck option that you can get in the game, it's what you have access to before you can get the flea market. Then finally, in the most ideal world, you're gonna go over to Jaeger and you're gonna barter three nippers for a CMS kit. This will allow you to put your limbs back on in raid, which will allow you to keep raiding instead of having to immediately try and find an extract when you lose your stomach or hobble on your way out as you have lost your leg. So I'm gonna start out for the non-EOD players looking at an alpha container. This kind of the most unfortunate scenario as you can't really save a lot of your meds if you die. Personally, I would like to keep the things that are most expensive or difficult to get. So in this case, if I had barter for a CMS kit, I'm probably going to keep that in my container. Next up, if we look at the cost of all these different items from the therapist, we can see that the car first aid kit is 7,300 rubles, where our tourniquet and our bandage are going to be 1,000 or 2,000 rubles. In addition to that, we're probably going to want to have our heavy and light bleed things hotkeyed. As a standard account, unfortunately, this is probably about how I would run my meds. I'd put the hard to get CMS kit in my my container along with the painkillers which are multi-use somewhat expensive and single slot and then because we want to have our bandage in our tourniquet on our hotkeys we're going to put our splint down there that leaves our car med kit up here in our rig as a healing resource but we do lose that if we die next up looking at the gamma container this is probably about how i'd run it early on i'm going to keep the more expensive items in the container i'm going to use the things that i want to have on my hotkeys up on the bar and then that way if i do die i don't lose all my meds every single time in addition i have that extra space to keep a key or you know some sort of utility slot and then some extra ammo to bring in the raid that I also don't want to lose. Overall, this is the loadout that I would recommend to use in Escape from Tarkov until you have level two traders in the flea market unlocked. Now it's time to get started making money in Escape from Tarkov, and I'll show you how to do that in this video right here.